Chapter 3 Ghost Kids Homecoming The pair re entered the forest from earlier. Only this time, there was no mist around to impair their vision. However, at some point, they could both hear a loud commotion in the distance. Ah, get away from me! What was that? questioned Taki. I don't know, answered Lewis. Come on! They both began to jog towards the source of the sounds. As they got closer, it turned out that it was none other than the three ghost Pokemon that Lewis encountered in the zone. <laughs> All three were scaring another individual. But then, at the corner of its eye, the Gengar spotted Lewis and Taki getting closer. Gang! Gengar! Gang! It cried. Haunt? said Haunter. Both Haunter and Ghastly looked in the direction that Gengar was gazing at and saw the boy. Once again, they became very scared and, very quickly, dashed out of sight. The stranger looked at the two children. Um, thanks, kids, he stuttered. Don't worry about him, reassured Lewis. Just go home, he continued. Almost immediately, the stranger took off. After he was out of sight, Lewis started to chuckle. <laughs> Taki grew curious oh, at the boy's laughter. What's so funny? She asked. <laughs> Those three are calling me Ghost Kid now, replied Lewis. Ghost Kid? Yep, answered the boy. Uh, this may surprise you, but I gave them a little scare myself, he explained. Taki's eyes widened in stunned silence. You scared a Gengar? She exclaimed. Yeah, it was easy, said Lewis. Sometimes, the scariest of people are the most afraid. Taki wondered, for a second, the origin of such a phrase. Is that another thing your mother taught you? She questioned. Oh, no. My dad taught me that one, answered Lewis. Before taking off, Lewis then remembered the bridge that had the Gyaradoses nearby. Taki reassured the boy that the Pokemon sleep at night, so they could safely cross. Lewis sighed in relief. After crossing the bridge and walking for a while, the twilight glow of an evening lit area began to permeate the darkness. That must be Flash Town, Lewis pointed out. As they approached, a village of wood and brick met their gaze. Its garden aromas filled the air with floral scents. Numerous cottages lined the well-kept streets, and the smell of delicious food from the inhabitants' dinner found their noses. Lewis's stomach grumbled. Oh man, he said quietly. There's no way I'm going to bed hungry. A short walk later, Lewis and Taki arrived at Lewis's home. Through a window, they spotted Lewis's mother. In turn, she noticed Lewis outside with Taki. His mother quickly dashed to the door, opened it, and looked outside. Lewis! She cried. Oh, thank goodness. She jogged over to Lewis and hugged him tightly. Uh, Mom, I can't breathe. A look of concern on her face displayed her worry. What happened to you? She asked. It's so late. <sighs> Lewis, Mother. feeling a little bit unsure, looked to Taki. She signaled him to tell his mother. Then, Lewis looked back to his mother. It's a long story he said. Lewis's stomach grumbled again, the demanding hunger growl heard clearly in his mother's ears. Hmm, you must be starving, she said. Minutes passed while Lewis devoured a plate of the finest curry composed of vegetable and rice. He and Taki explained the whole situation to Lewis's mother. However, she remained uncertain about the legitimacy of their story. So, let me get this right. She started. You rescued this young girl's Pokemon, she invited you back to her tribe, you were given some of their tea, and now you can suddenly talk to Pokemon? Lewis swallowed a mouthful of food and looked to his mother. That's pretty much it in a nutshell, he answered. Across the room, the family's Pidgeotto, perched on a windowsill, rolled its eyes. Right. It groaned. Next minute he'll say he is a Pokemon. 
Lewis overheard what the bird said. His eyes shifted towards the Pokemon and scowled at it. I heard that, Pidgeotto, growled Lewis. Taki peered at Lewis from the side. What did it say? She asked. Ah, <sighs> Pidgeotto said... Lewis paused. He turned to Taki with a bewildered look on his face. Did he hear that right? Is Taki not able to hear Pokemon talk? There was only one way to find out. Oi, you don't know what it said? No, replied Taki. At that moment, Lewis's eyes widened with a flabbergasted expression. You can't understand Pokemon? He added. Taki shook her head. No, I can't, she said. What? Why not? I wasn't able to drink the tea, answered Taki. It was way too bitter for me. Lewis looked on, bewildered at what Taki just explained. Oh, he quietly said. The boy suddenly had a passing thought regarding the tea. Wait, it was the tea that gave me this ability? He questioned. I believe so, responded Taki, nodding as well. I don't know how, but I think it may have something to do with that feather of Ho-Oh that Chief Tanaka puts in it. Lewis's mother had trouble understanding what was going on. Lewis noticed this and turned to his mother. I know this all sounds ridiculous, but it is true, he said. I really can talk to Pokemon. Well, you have always been a little different to everyone else, said Lewis's mother. Lewis was about to object to what she said, but after a brief moment, he realized what she actually meant and stopped himself. Oh, yeah, he said. Taki wasn't really sure what they meant by that. Lewis's mother began cleaning away her son's finished dinner. As she went to the kitchen to wash up, Taki leaned closer to Lewis. Lewis, I'm sorry, but what is she talking about? She inquired. Lewis hesitated for a moment. He felt that this answer might make him look odd. I'm... I'm not a Pokemon trainer, he explained. Taki seemed intrigued by Lewis's answer. You're not? She questioned. How come? I was never interested in being one, said Lewis. Taki just looked at him with a deadpan stare. Is that it? She said. Yeah, replied Lewis. The thing is, I never pictured myself being a Pokemon trainer. Me neither, offered Taki. Upon saying this, the height of the moon in the clouds alerted Taki of the time. Hey, it's getting late, she said. I should get back home. Lewis stretched and yawned. Oh. <sighs> Uh, maybe get you at the temple tomorrow? He voiced through a satisfying yawn. Taki nodded. She stood up and walked toward the door, but not before looking to the boy's mother. It was a pleasure meeting you. Um... She paused. You can call me Janet, answered Lewis's mother, smiling. <laughs>